Check out my new book in the description below and please subscribe. And once again, we have a link down below in the description, Tiny House Summer Camp Year 10. Build with us, hands-on, camp with us, guest speakers, demos, so much more up in Vermont in September. <laughs> All right, settle down there. All right, I just want to show you this. This is one of the coolest things ever. It's just rebar, scrap metal, chicken wire, and I think it's coffee sacks or canvas dipped in concrete. Always wanted to try this. This is at East Jesus, uh, the town or borough or village in uh, Slab City. So you make this archway. I, I have to do this. It's so cool. Just want to share with you guys. We're running out of light here, which stinks. And you create, yeah, just chicken. Oil. It's actually pretty strong. You keep layering stuff on, of course. just all welded tied off metal creating this like tall thin quonset hut love it and there's that seesaw that i must have for my vermont land for the tiny house workshops i do we do have a seesaw in the woods but this one's cooler So here's a breakdown of how this is done. I'm going to show you the hardware cloth and lath method and we'll show you the canvas bag method that you saw in that video earlier if you're still with me. Basically what we, what you uh, want to do is take rebar, that's R-E-B-A-R, -E a lot of people call it rebarb, it's rebar, which you can find, this marker is not doing so well, uh, at any hardware store, the big chains, all that. Um, if you can get the big, really long pieces to get one big bend and do it all in one fell swoop, that'd be great. But in a lot of cases, if you're transporting this stuff, it's tough to move really long pieces of it. So you get shorter lengths, you know, 10 feet, whatever, and wire them in the middle so that the two come together like this and like that, overlap a little bit, wire them together, just to show you in small format over there. And uh, it really works nicely. So once you get this, it's almost like the ribs of a whale. Once you get this down, these pieces will be Mad Magazine style. These dotted lines denote that they're driven into the ground here. So that would be, you know, ground level here. You can either drive those into the ground or even pre-pour a layer of cement, some concrete here, um, and put these in place when it's still wet or drill holes where you can insert the rebar to anchor it if you're in a high wind territory you know, near the edge of a cliff, on top of a hill, in the desert. I see a lot of this work mainly done in the desert. Wood prices are astronomical right now, so this might be something you want to try for that reason too. Hopefully by the time you see this video, wood prices, uh, lumber prices will have come down a bit because it's just insane right now. So if this was the other anchor here, pardon the crude drawings, you're just going to repeat that form over and over and over to whatever length you desire whatever width within reason you can't make this thing 40 feet wide because these are only going to have so much strength over that distance even though it is an arch in format so there's your basic it's almost like a hoop house greenhouse it's basically uh, almost exactly what it is but with rebar and you could use this of course to to frame a greenhouse i suppose as well so once these are in place you're then going to wire on your chicken wire, your lath, your hardware screen, hardware cloth, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes you find the stuff for free at the dump. When I bought my piece of land out in the desert, there was a lot of stuff illegally dumped there and anything that closely resembled or could be used as hardware cloth and screen I kept for a project like this. You're going to really crisscross it everywhere, add multiple layers if you can. The smaller you can get those screen holes, the better, so that less concrete will leak through. Uh, after that, comes the fun slash incredibly laborious part, which you're mixing the ferro cement. And there's a video at the, at the end of this video, I will link another video I did in the past that tells you the, mix, uh, the mixture, the format, how to do it, and shows where I'm actually working on a small project with ferro cement. Uh, but you're tying all these pieces on, your chicken wire, everything's crisscrossing as best as possible. And that is your base for troweling on the ferro cement. 
Uh, one tip I will recommend, if you can have someone applying on the outside, but someone standing on the inside of that build as well, so that when the stuff pushes through, almost like one of those old school Play-Doh machines that you know, you'd know push through the stuff, it comes out as noodles, uh, they control the inside as well, so it's not dripping, falling, being wasted everywhere. You can also lay a tarp in the inside if you're working on the bare ground, so that all that wet cement can be caught and potentially scooped up and reused, because you don't want to waste any of that stuff that you've broken your back to mix and to pay for and to haul. Um, with a structure like this, maybe pre-planned somewhere, you can have some kind of cool skylight to allow natural light and sunlight in because overall this will be a very dark, dingy, um, not so cheery cave if you don't plan for that. I would make it almost like a Quonset hut where in the back it's going to be walled in either full ferro cement or just make it you know, an archway, a, a HO scale train tunnel, and in the back you frame in a wood wall where you can easily or more easily pop in some windows. Uh, being a wood wall, you can hang things on it. It's a vertical wall. It's more conducive to having furniture in a structure like this. But on the front, what I would do is recessed back a little bit so you have this big overhang. Build another wooden wall here with maybe a, sorry all the overlying crisscrossing lines here. You could have a cool window here and a standard style door here as well. I'd probably pop in a window in the door. Again, more ventilation, more natural light, which is key in something like this. But by having this recessed, your rain drip line coming from this edge is somewhere around here now, preventing that flow back and flooding under your structure. In the structure ahead of time, you might want to frame in almost like a deck platform, a wooden floor, or you could go with concrete as well, just more mixing and more work. But lumber right now, again, is cost prohibitive, very expensive. So here's your wooden wall, maybe some tongue and groove, make it look all purdy like And uh, you trowel on this ferro cement. Start from the bottom, work up four or five inches, and then overlap as you go, consistently working on it. You don't want the stuff to dry out before the next layer you know, or without putting on a next layer because you want one layer to bond to the next and over and over. If you do it right, the stuff keeps out water. I mean, people make boats with this and you're making this caveman-like cool Quonset hut of concrete. The other method is to take, as you saw in the video, you know, coffee sacks, canvas bags, any of that kind of stuff, thoroughly soak them in the concrete mixture you have, plop them on that wire mesh, and trowel over them. What you're in effect doing is these, uh, and you overlap them too where possible. What you're doing is providing a mesh backing on top of the already installed hardware cloth and mesh that is even finer, thus preventing more of the concrete from leaking or bleeding through onto the interior. That tip I mentioned earlier where you have someone standing inside to trowel the excess that's pushing through so you don't waste it so it's not too lumpy. So this keeps more of that stuff from pushing through and being wasted and makes for a smoother, uh, more consistent surface. So if you, if you have a source for coffee sacks and that sort of thing, definitely take advantage of that. Not a great drawing here. Here's some shading here showing that this is an overhang, but it could make for a pretty cool structure in this, the super expensive era of lumber. Um, there's been plenty of these built out there. You can do all sorts of shapes. This is as basic, uh, basic as it gets. You can get real curve, linear, or amorphic is the term. They had a lot of furniture in the 50s that was like that. And it works out rather nicely. So that's the basic idea. If you have any tips, any corrections, hey, I'm cool with that. Leave some comments down below. I'd appreciate it. Please subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.